A speaker for the next time later will be introduced by our session chair, Dr. Sir A.J. Arimish. Sir, please. So we are back and uh, welcome back to the plenary hall. <clears throat> and our next speaker is Professor Junie of uh, Shanghai Center for Mathematics Sciences. Yeah. And he'll speak on a group of Yamaguchi Yao conjecture for quintic Kalabi Yao three force. Professor Junie. Thank you. Um, it is a great pleasure for me to, it's a great pleasure and honor for me to speak in the 2021 BRICS. Um, I will share with you the, the recent progress in, in, to, in our work in the Gromov uh, Witting environment. And this is a joint work with uh, also from Beijing University and Huai Liang Chan from Shanghai, uh, U, Hong Kong UST. Okay, so this is about Gromov Witten invariance of uh, quintics. Uh, Gromov Witten invariance is part of the mirror symmetry conjecture, which is challenging and influential. So it has, uh, it, it is started about the time when I was a graduate student at time of 1980s, and it is really initiated a lot of uh, progress in, and it become a big field in research in algebra geometry, synthetic geometry, topology, and so on. And Calabi Yau 3 4, I will mention the definition, but the, it's the first example is the Quintic 3 4. And for, this, for the Gromov Witten invariant, the string, it's, it's kind of an embarrassment for mathematician. It is, you know, the string series has been leading the research from 1989 to 1993 from genus zero, Candelas and genus one and BCOV Wafa, his group, and the, the, the BCOV Feynman rule. And late, the later is the, about the, the, the way to construct the, reconstruct the gromov invariant potentials for all genus up to 51. And mathematician is catching up in 1997. That's the proof, mathematical proof of genus zero case. And 2007, the genus one case. And since 2018, there's progress in toward the proving the BCOV uh, conjecture, final rule. So the, the, the latest progress is led by two groups one is Yong Bing Ran and his group. And also the other group is our group. The, the major partner is the Guo Sui from Beijing University and Huai Liang Chang from Hong Kong UST and myself from uh, Shang, um, Shanghai Center for Mathematical Science 
you know, at Fudan University. Okay, so let me mention about the, the Calabi Yaw manifold. So it is a high three dimensional analog of elliptic curves. You know, we know that the elliptic curve, the, the genus zero case is the is kind of a boring and genus one has a lot of structure and genus high genus, genus at least two is kind of a general type, which is tough to, to study. But for um, the genus zero case has a curvature zero, rich curvature zero case. And for the high dimension, it's for the three dimension, for the, for the, for the surface, it's K3 surfaces. And for three dimension, it is Calabria threefold. It is a smooth three dimensional complex manifold. It's a three dimension, complex dimension, complex manifold with uh, H1 finite. Uh, H1 finite them after you do, do, a, you do a, a finite covering become a simply connected and with also um, C1 equal to zero, the first chain class trivial. And because the first chain class trivial by Yao's uh, famous theorem, there is a rich flat metric from the, uh, the, the differential geometric point of view. So the first color BL34 is the Fermat Quinty 34. It is a, a hypersurface inside CP4, which is defined by a degree five polynomial. Indeed, I mean, for any, for most of the uh, degree five polynomial, which come, which gives a smooth uh, hypersurface, the group of fitting invariant are all the same. So let's just fix the one, which is the Fermat Quinty 34, the simplest, which is X15 plus or just, just the fifth order term from X1 to X5, sum equal to zero. So this is the Fermat Quintic 3 4. And this is something, well, I don't know. No, it's just getting complicated and simple enough, complicated enough just to eliminate the, the, the thing we think about, but it doesn't help, really help. So what is the chromophytic invariance of Quintics? Um, so in a way, in nutshell, for, for now, we just look at the modular, the space, we count the space of stable map, holomorphic, holomorphic map from a Riemann surface for algebraic curve, complex algebraic curve to the quintic, uh, the quintic Calabi Yau 3 for X. X is the Calabi Yau 3 for, okay. Uh, and, we will look at the moduli space. I'm, I'm writing this as a moduli space. Moduli space, all, all the F. F is from a smooth curve and that, that's the interior part. And when, you, when we do the, put the bar there, it's all stable curve. It is a nodal curve such that the image curve has degree D. Okay, X is a hypersurface in P4, so it has a degree. So we fix a topological uh, class of the map. And then we say F is stable. F is stable simply means that you cannot just in keep inserting a, a rational curve into the, into the curve. So just the automorphism of the map is finite. Okay, put it another way, is something that makes the modular space relatively okay workable, okay. So this is a compact proper modular space, it's a Dalin Manfo step, which has finite automorphism, but doesn't have infinite automorphism because it, uh, automorphism is always finite, it's, it's a stability. So the ideal case is when all stable maps are isolated. For instance, if you perturb the um, complex structure you allow, then you will make all the holomorphic curve. Well, that's, that's how this, um, um, Ken and Ryan did their, their construction in the syncretic category is they deformed the almost complex structure so that all the pseudo holomorphic map inside are isolated, rigid. There's no deformation. So then only finite many by, by, by uh, dimension count, you know, there are only finite many uh, maps into the Calabria three fold with deformed complex structure. And then you just count all this map number. So Gromov fitting in the ideal case, you just view that ideal case, the Gromov fitting are just the number of stable maps. Right? Mg is, G is the genus of the curve, D is the degree of the map, and X is the Calabi Yau 3 4, okay? 
But otherwise, in general, in algebra geometry, when we try to stay in algebra geometry, you, will ne you can never ask such a nice thing always happen. So we have to do the, the virtual cycle. Virtual cycle is a way to do the, this topological theory in algebra geometry. This is developed by my, Tian and myself, and also Baron and Fantaki used the, the, the uh, Cotanian complex language. So the actual definition is the degree of the virtual cycle of the module space. Okay, it just takes this and something that's, that, that can be worked out, but it is very difficult to cal calculate explicitly. So historical development is, uh, it led, as I mentioned, it's led by the mathematical physicists. And, uh, you know, it's, it's the generating function of the quintic. So uh, we are only talking about quintic. So I, I, I left out the quintic X explicit. So that's the, so it involves, you fix the G, right? You fix the G, but you let the D grow. And for every D you put a Q, Q is just a variable. So you record the uh, number of the genus G degree D chromophyton invariant with fixed G. Then you get the FG, which is the generating function. This is an infinite power series. And in 1989, Kandaras and his group derived F0 explicitly okay so he basically wrote down the write down a, a, a formula and say okay this is the way to, to get this one and that's really shocking and that's the 989 by mirror symmetry okay what is mirror symmetry okay let me just mention this mirror symmetry using the word of alpha in, in his 1998 icm planetary talk is a very difficult mathematical problem so calculate all degree D uh, gromophytic variants, counting holomorphic curve in Calabria 3 4 gets transformed on the mirror to a question involving the variation of Hodge structure. Okay, so that's, that's the mirror symmetry and uh, it is just transform a very well-defined mathematical problem in, in enumerating geometry of algebra geometry to variation of Hodge structure, which is a kind of a, you know, difficult and uh, well, actually the calculation of variation of Hodge structure is much easier from a physical point of view. But the point is to get transformed. This, this is really like a six dimension, six sense, six dimensional uh, analog in this discussion and, and there's no logic behind it. So what we say is that all whatever, you know, the, the, the Kandaris formula F0 has been talked about is the conjecture, right? Because for, from our perspective, but, you know, in two years, 1991, BCOVV is alpha. BCOV, they derive F1 right, explicitly of, of the quintic, more than quintic, but for quintic, they derive explicitly. And 1993, they, they constructed the BCOV farming rule for FG. I won't be talking about farming rule, but, but you know, that's something amazing. And then 2009, Clem, Clem is kind of a mathematician when I, I know him. So, and, and so explicit method to get FG for G up to 51. Okay, they, they didn't get a closed form, but they have laid down the explicit method how to get this, but somewhere, quite a few key steps, they involve something which we don't understand at all. So let me just mention BCOV Feynman rule is a finite combinatoric algorithm determine the generating function up to three G minus three constant. So up to three G minus three G constant, we can, we can sort of determine the whole, whole, whole things. So this is his work. Now, what is mathematics? In 1987, uh, Giventhal and uh, Lian Liu Yao, he's the two group proved the genus equal to one formula. So mathematically proved the formula. And 2004, Yamaguchi Yao conjectured the functional equation. This is the equation we're going to mention how to prove it. And then in 2009, Zinger proved the G equal to one formula. So this is the, so far the, the, the progress, okay? I mean, so you think about it, 97 and 2009, and here genus one is 91 and genus zero is 89. So 10 years after the genus zero, but for physicists from genus zero to genus one, they took two years and for us 10 more years from genus zero to genus one. Okay. 
Okay, now let's let me explain the Yamaguchi Yao conjecture. Okay, so when I look at this these slides, I mean, I'm kind of my, my mind is kind of become uh, spinning. I mean, the point is that you can define the I, I, the, 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 the pink, pink label. These are become a power series in Z, in Q, okay? And J is a power series, Y is a power series, you span, expand it, and I11 is a power series, and then A1, A I, B I, X. So they, they just uh, you just take a think of this as a power series. You, know, you can you if if you sit down, you can have a way to write them down in in a way that is uh, you know reasonably explicit. And what do you do? You're setting for the genus zero and genus one because of the automorphism, you have to all um, modify the, the constant term a little bit. But the point is the FGQ, Q is a capital, Q is, 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 is uh, I use the capital Q, is, is, is a basically give you all the Gromov weighting invariants, right? N0, D, and 1 D, and, and G, D, right? So G bigger than one, you have all the, the, the FQ. And then you have PGN. PGN is another polynomial, I mean, you just modify. I, 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 this is all told us, told us by, by the physicists, okay? So you just do this and then the point is that once you know the PGM, you know the FG. And of course you know the FG, you know the PGM. So knowing PGM will give you all the information you need about the FG, okay? So the Yamaguchi Yao's polynomial structure conjecture is that the PGM this infinite power series, which is kind of a way of rewriting the, the, the Gromov weighting invariants of genus G, and the less um, Gromov weighting invariants involve Gromov weighting invariants of genus G and those of less than G, genus of less than G. Okay. It lies in the ring A, B, B2, B3X. Okay, these are the, I mean, I'm not going to go back and back, but these are the polynomials I just mentioned, you can explicitly roll down, right? And these are the power, these are the power series we mentioned before, and the PGM is the polynomial that, that you can recover from PGM, you can recover F. So basically you're seeing that, we're seeing that the, the Yamaguchi Yao polynomial structure conjecture say that the, the relevant environment we need to know actually is in the ring of a ring generated by these five explicit polynomial. So basically this is a finite conjecture. So if you know the explicit form, because if, if it's ring in only is, is a polynomial ring of, uh, of these five polynomials. So it will involve a couple of coefficients involve A, B, blah, blah. And then if you know that these coefficients you can you you know the p because you know a b and b i right and you know once you know the p you know the f so this is a finite conjecture for the uh, for the for the for the uh, for the Gromov footing invariance so Yamaguchi Yao polynomial stru structure conjecture is a finite conjecture on the um, Gromov footing invariance of quintics. And the main theorem is that uh, Yamaguchi Yao's polynomial structure conjecture holds true for Quinte Calabi Yao 3 4. And this is uh, online, it's, it's already accepted and it's already appeared online on Annals of Mathematics. Okay, let me try to explain the proof. What is the proof? Okay, so. Um, so there's a Rosetta stone. I, I know everybody knows this story. And from the stone, we get the hint. And from the hint, we try to make sense of the hint. And from our way of making sense, we found the way to prove the zero. So that's amazing. So it's a, a what, is the, what is the Rosetta stone? This is the Rosetta stone. It's a stone, uh, well, actually it's, 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 it's a, uh, one paragraph, one line or two lines from Witten's research paper. So 
there is a continuous family of conformal field series. So this is the Rosetta Stone of a conformal field series interpreting from Landau Ginsburg to Calabiyao. The CY and LG correspondence arises upon examining this relation in the presence of a particular common superpotentials. Okay, so here's the key, here are the keywords: Landau Ginsburg, Calabiyao. Okay, and there's a Calabiyao Landau Ginsburg, Ginsburg correspondence, and there's this common superpotentials. Okay, so from reading the Witten's paper, you kind of get a sense that Landau Ginsburg should relate to the FJRW invariants I mentioned shortly, and Calabi Yao should relate to the Grom of Witten invariants, and the correspondence, something like a transition interpolation or wall crossing if you do the algebra geometry. And common potential, super potential is the LG function which led to cross-section localized virtual cycles. And this, all of this, by looking at the stone, by looking at the keywords, by trying to make sense of the keywords and based on our experience and blah, 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 after all the work, it led us to the introduction of a new field called the NMSP field. Okay, let me try to make sense of what I just said a little bit more. What is the LG function? The LG function is P times X one fifth plus X five fifths. So it's just a, quint a Fermat quintic polynomial plus a P. One N is, so this is the LG function and the, the Witten's word says that there's two end of this function, right? The one N is the Gromov Witten. What is this? So we take the gromov witten invariants of X fifths of the Fermat quintic hypersurface inside P4, and we take the uh, stable maps, and we take the virtual cycle, and then we take the uh, generating function. But why is that, right? Why is that? Okay, let me, let me, let me do the other one. The other end is the FGRW. FGRW is the, Okay, you take instead of the moduli of quintic hype Calabi-Yau threefold, you just do a polynomial and then you do the five spin curve. Five spin curve is a curve with a line bundle. So the line bundle is isomorphic to the canonical line bundle of the curve, okay? Well, you may you may have to add some marking, and you have to allow the the the, the obvious structure, so it, it has to be a, a, a stack curve curve step. But that that's just technical, okay. So why how how these two theory become the two ends of this LG function? So that's that's our way of interpreting. So we rewrite the theory. For the Gromov witten invariance of X, we instead of just say a map, well, it's a map to P5, P4. A map to P4 involves five sections of a degree D line boundary if the map is degree D, right? So we just look at the stable map with field. So we, we have slightly changed. We, we, instead of X, we put a P4 here, instead of we under, on the shoulder, we put a P there. So this is C, C is a Riemann surface, it's algebraic curve, genus G, okay? And L, L is a line bundle on the curve. And then phi and rho, they are, these are sections. Five has a, have five sections, five copies of a uh, section of L. So L, L fifth. And rho is, okay, here is tensor with omega C. This is tensor by uh, gravity. This is what we learn from physicists. And that is extremely important, okay? So you just look at this one. And if you look at this, this become a field theory on curve. So it's a semi-linear theory, right? It does not involve a map into a highly non-linear space, but it's, it's kind of a, almost a linear space, like a projective space, okay? And then you just take a section of line bundle and you know, there's a curve, of course, curve is non-linear, but it's, it's, it's degree one, it's dimension one non-linear. Right? So it's what we call semi-linear theory. 
So stable map with field, which is just, uh, you know, if you take a stable map with field, we have C, we have L, we have phi, phi never zero, right? We, we want it to never zero, okay? But if phi is never zero, phi is going to define you a map into P4 and then couple with the field. So, so stable map with the field is just, uh, no, wait, okay, let me, let me try to again, try again. So original, we say this is a curve with a line bundle with a bunch of fields, only fields. But now all of a sudden we say, okay, this has become a, a stable map, C to P4 plus a loop field, okay? And here is the theorem. Suppose has a the obstruction theory has a cross-section. So I'm not going to rewrite the whole theory. This is the way we, 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 we proved long before this project began. So it's with the king. Then the cross-section localized virtual side. There's a cross-section localized virtual side. The cross-section is the one given by the, 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 the LG function. is equivalent to its ordinary virtual side. Okay, and the point is the second second theorem is that the cross-section localized virtual cycle of the modular of stable map with field has, you know, this is the, right, this is the cross-section localized modular virtual cycle of the modular space is the NGD. NGD is just the gromov fitting invariance. So we can rewrite the gromov fitting invariance of the quinted. Quinted is highly nonlinear space, subspace of a P4 into a semi-linear theory on the modularized space of uh, stable map with sections. Stable maps to P4 with sections is a semi-linear theory. So this really is transforming a theory into, into a semi-linear theory. So let me just re, 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 uh, re-summarize. At the LG function, a seemingly simple idea found its beautiful role in the forming of concession localized virtual cycle to get theorem of Chen and myself. And this transformed a nonlinear theory to a semi-linear theory. The, the nonlinearity is pushed under the rug, the virtual cycle. So by using the virtual cycle, so the nonlinearity of say a map going into the, the, the quintus three, three four is disappeared. All what's left is we have to do a virtual cycle, uh, the, the, the concession localized virtual cycle. And the concession involves the quintic. So the quintic, quintic property, the nonlinear, the nonlinearity from the quintic is going into the virtual cycles. Okay, what about the what about the, the FGRW invariance? Well, FGRW invariance is the uh, we mentioned is about the, the spin curve. What is a spin? Spin is, rho is isomorphic, right? We, we mentioned the spin is that, uh, what is the spin? Spin is L to the power of five isomorphic to omega. Okay, so it's an isomorphism. So isomorphism, isomorphism can be just turn one, li uh, one um, line boundary into the do, so become a section of L minus, minus five, tensor with omega, right? And okay, it's isomorphic, so it has to be a nowhere vanishing section. So rho is a nowhere ne vanishing, never never zero. So phi is never zero, but phi is a five section. So never zero is, is become a map. So rho is a nowhere, is, is a line bound, is a section of a line bound, it is nowhere zero, so it become a, make the line bound trivial. So rho is isomorphic, which is rho is never zero. And then we can, we can conform this modular space, 5P. Okay, so what I'm, what I'm, sigma is just marking. Okay, with this time we have to have it, but let's, let's just forget it. So we have C, we have L, we have five, five, we have rho, and five is five section, and rho is isomorphism, and isomorphism can be, since, so this is just like before, right? It's a stable map with section, but except that, before we say five is never zero, but now here we become rho is never zero. So here's, here's the point. The point, if we form this construction and then we will work a standard obstruction theory of this one, then this construction provides an algebraic construction of the narrow FGRW invariance. So it's not, I mean, the, the upshot of this theorem is not that we give a new 
constructing, but rather that it will give it a construction that's parallel to our rewriting of the global fitting invariance of Quinty. And now the next one is that the, 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 the Rosetta Stone say that the two end of the, so the witness will say that two ends of the family of the series are removed between variants of the quintics associated with the same LG function. So this is the key point, associated with the same, same LG function. So we see the two sides are series of moduli of C sigma, sigma is the marking, um, just, just forget about the marking and just focus on C, and the line amount of L, and there's a Lu, and then phi. And the stable map is your, your phi is never zero, phi and Lu, phi and Lu are the same, right? You see phi and Lu are the same, but only the stability is different. So to move with invariance, you, are, you only allow phi, which, is, which are never zero, five are five sessions, five sessions are never zero, no common zero, okay? But the FGRW is that you, you allow you only allow rule to be never zero. Rule is a session of a line, one line bundle, so it, it, it's never zero. Mean it, the line bundle is trivial. Okay. So the two these actually associate to two GIT quotients of this adding uh, step quotients. The two GIT quotient is one is you taking allow the taking away the one st the unstable locus is by C. Phi, C5 minus, take out of the minus zero. The other one is taking out the C minus zero. And the quantization of this, because you have a C star action, so you put a line bundle here, and, and then there's, you put a curve, you put a line bundle, and then you know you have a rule which is associated to C, right? And this is, and then this is phi, which is C5, and you, you because you subtract zero, your phi is never zero. And here you have C minus zero because Lu is C and because you take out zero from C, Lu is never zero. So what, I, what we are seeing is that all of a sudden you realize these are just, okay, these are just a baby case, but these are the two quantizations of the two GIT quotients of one single adding step quotient, okay? So this, this is everything. This is, I mean, look, I mean, we are still trying to make sense of the, uh, the, the witness works, okay. And now what do we want to do? We, because uh, witness says that, you know, you need to study the transformation from one theory to the other. And if you look at it, if you think about it, I mean, then, the way you do is you construct a master space which interpreted two series and using a master series, master series to master space to study what is the master space. The master space interprets these two GIT quotient is the GIT quotient of this huge. So you just add a P1 into the, the above adding step. So you look at this. So here you look at this, the C5, C, C are the pr previous copies and the extra C cross C are the P1, C2, okay. And you, and the weight, the, because you, you add one action C star, originally there's one C, so you have two C star action and then here's, here are the weights acting on this one. And the, 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 the you take semi-stable points, semi-stable are F, U non zero, PV non zero, and UV non zero. So these are um, not common, uh, not both zero or, right, in this case. So these are stability. Now, what do we do? We quantize it. We quantize in the master space, we obtain the MSP field. Okay, the MSP field is coming from quantizing the master space relating the F, uh, global fitting variance and the FTRW in that. So, okay, so if you look at this one, we see sigma is just marking of each other. C, L, but we have, because we, this time we have, we have, we have two, I mean, the, the, the thing we learn is that once we have one copy of C star, we have to put a one line bundle. Now we have another C star, we have two line bundle, and here are the, are the weight. So this actually gives you the, the line bundle where the sections is, is belong to. So here, you have L, you have two line bundle, 
you have five loops. These are the two previous sections. And you, because of a two more copy of C edit, we have to put two more fields, which are mu and mu. And because of quantization, these are all sections of line bundle over C, okay? Well, C, L, phi, rho are the old stuff. And N, mu, V is a P1 family over, over C, which is a line bundle plus blah, blah, blah. And such that these are nowhere zero, right? This is a stability condition. These are the stability condition. I mean, the stability condition is written before. So we have nowhere zero. So in other words, the M mixed spin P. So mixed spin, spin is the, the spin, the FGRW where P field, P field is the one which is coming from the, giving the, the remote waiting environments, right? So these are the sigma is the marking. CL is the old stuff, phi rule is the old stuff. And the, the pink one, the, the red one is the N and mu, new. These are the new stuff. And phi and rho are the old, uh, you know, five section from L and minus five tensor with omega, which is tensor omega is the tensor by the, by, by the, called the twisted by the uh, weight, gravity, right? And mu and nu, mu and nu are this ln and n. Why is ln and n? Well, if you look at this one, right? It's, it's, this is one, one, and this is one. So that, that tells you everything such that these are nowhere there. So these are the mixed spin P fields, okay? So it's a curve with a marking, but it's a, it's, it's, it's a twisted curve. It's a, 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 a darling mouthful stack curve with two line boundary, two invertible sheaf on it, L and N, and with a bunch of section, five rho, mu, and nu. And the sections are written as such, and such that the stability conditions are that uh, we say stable mixed spin P fields are when five and mu together has no common zero and rho and nu together has no common zero and mu and nu together has no common zero, okay. So here's the theorem. The theorem is that the modular mixed spin P field is a C star during Manfred stack with a compactly support C star equivalent virtual cycle and the local, the localization form because it's a, it's a three month stack with a virtual cycle and which the virtual cycle is C star equivalent. So we can get the, get the localization formula and the localization formula provides a collection of polynomial relations among the global fitting variants of the quintic and the FJRW invariants of the quintic from our polynomial. Okay, so this is a, um, well, Okay, proof. How to prove? Well, the point is we just look at the fixed loss. The fixed loss are the three cases. There's a mu, you could, the one field is mu, one case is the first case is the mu, the mu field is zero. If the mu field is zero, mu v is never zero, right? So v nu has to be, well, nu i or v. V has to be equal to one, but it's a line bounder. So, so it's, a, it's a constantly one section. And if this, uh, uh, now, phi is never zero, and rho is arbitrary. It gives a, it gives a, a global fitting environment. The other case is, uh, gives the FGRW environment. And the third case is the Hodge integral on MG. So the, light, the, the key point, the localization formula gives an interpretation between Gromov waiting variance and the FGRW, right? So this is the, this. Okay, so then we go on to, because of what our aim, I mean, our first aim of course is just to get a relation, but then we get ambitious. So we want to crack the, the, the Yamaguchi Yao conjecture and further the, the BCOV um, Feynman rule. So with Guo Sui joining our group, we, we further introduced NMSP field. Okay. Now the point is that mu, instead of one mu, we put N mu. Mu are all the same from the same line model. With, with mu one up to mu N repeated N times. 
Okay, I, 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 I don't have a proof because the, the passing rule has no um, place in the, you know, no place in the definite or, or mathematical rigor. It has it's not been defined mathematical rigor. So, but it feels like using M M M M M MSP field to approximate a pass integral, n, let n goes to infinite, okay. So use the theory of NMSP, we have proved Yamaguchi Yao polynomial stretch of conjecture, go to for quintic Calabi Yao 3, 4. Well, the proof is a part of the theory of NMSP fields and work out. It is accepted, it is appear on the Annual of Mathematics, it's online 2021. We also proved the BCOV Feynman rule, ho Chu for quintic Calabi Yao 3, 4. And this is in archive. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for this inspiring talk. And uh, are there any questions from the audience here or from the online audience? So, if not, I have a small question about the yep. orbital mirror variant. So, when you defined it, uh, you used the C, L, phi, and rho. Yes. And the phi was never identically zero. And what was the condition on rho for the oh. common variant? Uh, Rho is this section, the section, okay, this Rho is a, okay, so here is the, the thing, right? Because this is weight one, so it's it involved line bundle one, right? This is weight minus five. Weight minus five makes the minus L tensor minus five, minus five fifth power come in. But then you have to twist by gravity. This is what we learn from physics, okay? So this is the, um, Rule and the rule is going to be. Uh, can you see the, the first definition? It was much before. First time when you introduced this one. Oh yeah, yeah. So the the zero is that's that's a tricky part. So if if we do this, if rule is never zero, rule make this one is identity is a trivial line model. So this L to the power five is isomorphic to omega C. This is the spin five, five spin curve. And this, the Gromov Whitting invariant case is you let the phi never zero, which gives you a map, but then, then the rule is just use this rule to allow you to do the virtual cycle, cosecting localized virtual cycle, and which gave you the Gromov Whitting invariant. It's, That's really mysterious. It's like a circular of the exterior, right? Hmm? It's the circular of the exterior. No, it's not. Uh, which line? Uh, it's uh, not of L dual tensor omega, right? So yeah, 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 tensor, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it, it is, yeah, it's tensor minus five. Yeah, so it's H1 of the cell here. So you're making some statement about the H1, or is that giving you the stability? Because you, when you interpret the, it as the, a map to P4, you are saying it is stable map. That's the stability is just this, this is so simple as this is stability. Stability, you quantize this stability is just taking out of the origin, right? But if you quantize it, you make it, a, you know, this stability makes the phi never zero. Five is five sections. Right, but five sections. And this already gives you a map, right? That alone is enough to give you a map. Yes. So what is the stability of the map? Oh, this is the um Um, let's see, uh, let's see my mind. Okay, I, I, I see what you try to say. Uh, 
but we still put the automorphism finite, yes. Yeah, so. Yeah, yes, yes. We, we, we try to emphasize the LG function here in this size. So is your C reducible? Like, for instance, if the genus is there on to two, then of course automatically. Oh, we, 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 we still say it's a, uh, um, no, that's a, okay. So, okay. So this, the, the, the spin case, you, you have to make the, the curve, uh, um, curve stable and okay, you, you just make the, the automorphism finite. Yes, automorphism finite. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so that will be kind of an extra assumption there. Yeah, yeah. So because the. Um, The 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 M the M the MSP field the original MSP field is just make the uh, non-zero plus automorphism finite. Uh, I I didn't write the automorphism finite here. It's it's just uh, because uh, we we with with a curve with line bundle and with section you can define the whole package as a, as a self automorphism. Yeah, you you make this non-vanishing property plus automorphism finite. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So if no further questions, let's time the speaker again. Thank you. Thank you.